Yes. How's it going? You alright, yeah? Just having a nice glass of Echo Falls. It's fucking nice, but I think my body's getting a bit too used to it now, you know. It's not really giving me that tipsy feeling, you know, like it used to. You know, because I'm getting used to it. I might have to step up, you know, to that proper 12 whiskey. You know, Conor McGregor's proper 12 whiskey, I think that's like 40%. This here is about 10%, you know, and it's not really getting me to that that level that it used to get me to, you know, because I'm getting a bit used to it. So I'm going to have to step up to that proper 12 whiskey of McGregor's. You know, that proper 12 whiskey was sponsoring Javante Davis's fight, on it, on the weekend. That was quite a good uppercut on it from Javante Davis. You know, he was throwing that from the start, you know, from the first bell. You know, I don't know why Leo Santa Cruz was fucking not expecting it. But it's probably easier said than done in it, saying, oh, he's been throwing it from the start. Why didn't you avoid it? Why wasn't you expecting it? He's been throwing it from the start. But it's probably easier said than done in it. But it was a good shot, wasn't it? But you see that proper 12 whiskey, you know, advertised on the fucking ropes. He's fucking getting his product out there in a McGregor. So I'm have to try that, you know, it's quite stronger than this. I like that tipsy feeling. You know, it helps me talk shit in videos. Yeah, that fucking Beyonce Wilder's back talking shit in it. Beyonce Wilder. You know, he's fucking stopped twerking and he's back talking shit in it. You know, he's crawled out from underneath his rock of silence. And he's back talking shit in it, Beyonce Wilder. You know, saying that his old trainer, Mark Breland, spiked his drink. You know, he's talking a lot of shit in it, Beyonce Wilder. But... <sighs> kind of heard it all before aren't we it's kind of like old news now it's kind of boring isn't it it's like we've heard it all before you know with their outfit being too heavy and it wore his legs down and made him tired and you know Tyson Fury fucking cheated with the glove you know taking some of the padding out so he could fucking really smash up Deontay Wilder but there's nothing wrong with that glove at all, is there? You know, I've seen better photos than that, you know, that make the glove look a bit dodgier. But it's just all excuses, in it? It's not fucking genuine at all. It's old news, in it? But you know, Coogan's gonna go around with his camera, you know, for the next fucking three months, you know, asking people about the fucking comments from Deontay Wilder. You know, about his trainer spiking his drink, you know, just trying to milk views out of people. But it's just fucking boring, innit? It's old news, man. It's old news, innit? I used to like Deontay Wilder, you know. I was never, like, a big fan of him. I was never, like, a big, big fan of him. But I remember watching him on Joe Rogan's podcast, you know, where he said that he got into boxing, you know, to help out his little daughter, you know, who suffers from some kind of illness. And he needed the money, you know, to, like, pay her medical bills. Because her medical bills are quite a lot. So he needed the money and he was in a little shit dead end job at the time. I think he was a, like a delivery driver for Budweiser. You know, in some little dead end job. And he couldn't afford to pay her medical bills. So he got into boxing, you know, to make that money. You know, to look after his daughter's fucking medical bills. So I really liked him, like... I didn't really like him, but I just thought, you know what, this guy's a classy guy, you know. I admire him, you know, well done, you know, well done. But then he starts coming out with all this fucking bullshit about the fucking outfit was too heavy and he's been spiked and Tyson fucked around with the glove. It made him look like a fucking dosser. Well, yeah, it's old news. We've heard it all before, haven't we, with that outfit, so I don't... I've done videos fucking dissing him before about all these excuses that he's coming out with, so it's kind of like old news now, isn't it? It's old news, man. But yeah, I'd like to see him fight again, you know. You know, that knockout power, so I'd like to see him fight again. You know, fucking Roy Jones, he was on a Joe Rogan's podcast recently, and he said that he'd like to train Deontay Wilder. 
you know how Roy Jones is training Chris Eubank Jr. So Roy Jones said he wants to train Deontay Wilder, you know, and like teach him how to use his left hand. You know, because his right hand's quite good. He's knocked out a load of people with his right hand. So Roy Jones said he wants to train Deontay Wilder, you know, and teach him how to use his left hand. Because he said his jab's a bit shit. He don't know how to use his left hand, but... I think having a shit jab is quite beneficial for Deontay Wilder because he like throws a little shit jab, you know, and his opponents think, oh, what the fuck is this shit? And then they try and attack him and then he fucks him up with a right hand. So I think Deontay Wilder having a shit jab and a shit left hook and a shit left uppercut, just a shit left hand in general, I think it, it's beneficial to him. Because it kind of like fools his opponents, you know, into thinking that he hasn't got anything. You know, and then he fucks them up with a right hand. So, you know, Roy Jones saying he wants to train Deontay Wilder and he wants to work on his left hand. Roy Jones, he, you know, he might have been a good boxer. But he's not a good trainer, man. He's not, not necessarily. You know what I mean? Like I said, you know, Brendan Ingle, he was a shit boxer. He won all that as a boxer, Brendan, but he became a brilliant trainer, you know, and produced champions at every single level, area title level, British title, Commonwealth, European and world title level. You know, and Brendan was a little shit boxer, but he became a brilliant trainer. So, you know, Roy Jones, you know, he might have been a good boxer, but he's not necessarily a good trainer. But yeah, Deontay Wilder put in this video out on his Instagram, you know, he's back and he's like talking again. He went really quiet, didn't he? You know, after he got fucked up by Tyson Fury, he went really quiet, you know, and people was like, what's happened to him? Why aren't he talking? Why aren't he talking? So now he's back talking again, you know, putting that video out on his Instagram. I don't know what it's about though. What's it about? Is it... He might have got bored, you know, of being out of the limelight, like... He might have wanted that attention, you know, like Tony Bellew. You know, making those kind of daft faces so people look at him and pay him attention. You know, he's craving the spotlight in he, Tony Bellew. You know, even though when he got fucked up by Usyk. You know, when Usyk made him bend over like a bitch. You know, he said in the interview afterwards that he didn't want to be fucking in the spotlight anymore. He didn't want to be interviewed. You know, he didn't want people coming up to him and fucking giving him attention. You know, he wanted to go back to being called Anthony Bellew. You know, that's what he said, didn't he, Tony Bellew. Well, he can't fucking keep away from the cameras now, can he? You know, making those kind of daft faces so people look at him and pay him attention. You know, he craves the attention, don't he, Bellu? You know, even though he said he don't want any more attention and he wants to vanish. You know, he can't really stick to that for long, could he, Bellu? You know what I mean? He got sick of sitting at home with his wife and kids. You know, he can't keep away, can he, Bellu? He fucking loves being on camera now, don't he? So he didn't really stick to that for too long, did he? Wanting to be away and be called Anthony Bellu. You know, and it might be the same for the Dosser, Beyonce Wilder. You know, he's got a nice fancy wife, you know, with nice, thick, juicy thighs. But you know, after fucking being around those nice, sexy, thick, juicy thighs, you know, he might be fucking bored of them, you know what I mean? He might want that fucking spotlight, and you know, and that adulation from the boxing world. So you know, those nice, thick, juicy thighs. You know, they might not be giving Deontay Wilder what he really wants, you know, like adulation and attention from the boxing world. So he's back in here making these little daft videos. Like I've had nice women in the past, you know, and they look quite nice and that, but you know, after a while the fucking novelty wears off and you just don't give a fuck. So it's probably the same with the Dosser. And like, you know, Joshua, you know, when he used to look a bit dodgy back in the days, you know, when he was like really struggling sexually, you know, but then he stuck with boxing and he started to improve and he started to make money. You know, when he started to make money and he started to look better and he was getting a load of pussy sliding into his DMs, he was probably like really excited about it. You know, at first, 
But you know now, he's probably not bothered, is he? You know, because he probably sees it a lot. You know, fucking women trying to slide into his DMs. And he like said in an interview that he gives his cousin his phone, you know, so he can delete all the messages. So Joshua's probably bored of it now. He's probably, you know, the novelty is probably wore off, you know, getting all these fucking women sliding into his DMs, you know, trying to fuck him. You know, I've had some decent looking women, you know, but, you know, after a while, you just get fucking bored of it. You know, the novelty wears off. You know what I mean? You get fucking bored of it. So it's probably the same with Joshua, isn't it? You know, and he probably fucking passes those women onto AKA skins. You know, he loves fucking Joshua's leftovers, a.k.a. skins. You know, he fucking hangs around, you know, trying to get hold of Joshua's leftovers, don't he? You know, using Joshua's name, you know, for sexual reasons, a.k.a. skins. He's like a little mouse, isn't he? He's like a little fucking mouse, you know, picking up cheese. You know, Joshua's leftovers, they like the cheese. You know, an AKA Skins runs around, you know, picking up the cheese. You know, Joshua's cheese is like a little fucking mouse in it, AKA Skins. You know what I mean? He's fucking all over these women, in it, picking up cheese like a little fucking mouse. A little mouse. Well, yeah, Joshua just gets rid of him and just fucking passes him onto AKA skins, you know, because he's fucking bored of him now. You know, and it's probably the same with the Dosser, you know, Beyonce Wilder, you know, with his fancy wife and her nice, fancy, big, thick, juicy thighs. You know, he's probably fucking bored of it now, isn't he? So he's trying to get attention, putting out these daft videos, you know, making excuses, you know, slagging off his old trainer, Mark Breland. It's just hype, innit? It's just publicity. It's just a publicity stunt, in it from the Dosser. You know, like Derek Cesora telling Coogan to get out of his hotel room. That was quite good to see, wasn't it? You know, seeing Cesora having a go at Coogan, it was quite good to see, wasn't it? Do you know what I mean? I think a lot of people are starting to realise what Coogan's really like. You know, these little fake smiles with Michelle Hoare Phelps. You know, trying to get into a fucking knickers. It's just fucking fake, innit? That's a that's obviously a fake smile, innit? You know, to try and be all friendly, you know, to get into Michelle Horfelt's knickers. It's obviously a fake smile, innit? It's not genuine at all, is it? So I think a lot of people are starting to realise, you know, Coogan, he's a bit snidey, innit? You know, he's a bit snidey, you know, Billy Joe Saunders said it in a few months back, you know, and he said that he was walking in a shopping centre with Coogan. And then Billy Joe Saunders, you know, he picked up a pair of fancy trainers and said, these are nice, aren't they? And then Coogan said, oh, I can easily afford to buy them. My YouTube channel is worth five million pounds. So, you know, this little fucking arrogant cunt, Coogan. People are starting to realise what he's like, aren't they? So, you know, Cesaro kicking him out of his fucking hotel room. It was good to see one. Because like a lot of these YouTubers, you know, they think they're the fucking shit. You know what I mean? They think they're the fucking shit. You know that Jew, Ellie Sekbach? Even when Tyson Fury said that he can't interview him anymore and he kicked him out of a press conference, you know, because of the Jew was taking the piss out of Tyson Fury, punching himself in that fight. So Tyson Fury fucked off the Jew and said that the Jew can't interview him anymore and be in the press conferences. Even though the Jew has got like 500,000 subscribers on YouTube, you know, Tyson Fury fucked him off. Because Tyson Fury realised that he's the main man. But you know these fucking YouTubers, they think that they're the fucking shit, don't they? You know, because they've got a blue tick and they've got a few thousand subscribers. So it was good to see Tyson Fury fucking off the Jew. 
you know, and it was good to see Derek Cesaro, you know, fucking off Kogan and telling him to get out of his hotel room. You know, it's quite good to see one if I'm Cesaro. You know, Cesaro, he said that Kogan's trying to, like, take the whole pie for himself. You know, he's trying to keep all the views in it. He's trying to keep all the posse and views in it, Kogan. He don't want to share any of the posse and views, does he, Kogan? He wants to fucking keep the whole thing to himself, the whole pie. You know, and it's kind of true, isn't it? You don't want to fucking let anyone else get paid, does he? I used to work for Kogan's channel. You know, I used to interview a few boxers. And I used to travel around, you know, like taking money out of my own pocket. You know, interviewing boxers all over the place, all over England. You know, and Kogan didn't give me a penny. But then when I started slagging him off in these videos, you know, my viewers started having a go at him, you know, sending him direct messages, kind of put pressure on Coogan. And then he gave me a little 200 pounds. So he's a bit fucking snidey in here. He wants to keep the whole pie. He wants to keep all the money and all the posse and views to himself. So, you know, Cesaro having a go at him, it was quite good to see, wasn't it? It was really fucking good to see. You know, taking three years to give me 200 pounds. You know, and then he's got the nerve to say, is your dick causing you sleepless nights? He's got a fucking nerve on it. He's got a fucking nerve, you know, he don't give a toss about people being in debt. That's the face of a man who doesn't give a toss about people being in debt. He don't give a toss. So, you know, Cesaro having a go at him, it was quite good to see one he. But I knew it wasn't real. I knew it was fake beef. You know, people kept messaging me saying, oh, have you seen Derek Chazor having a go at Coogan? Have you seen it? Have you seen it? He was really angry. You know, I knew he wasn't really angry. I knew it was fake beef. You know, we've seen it all before from Chazora. Because, like, you remember when Chazora was kicking off at that press conference, you know, when he boxed the big stiff idiot, David Price. You know, the plumber from Liverpool. You know, and he was having to go at Eddie Earn, you know, and Adam Smith. You know, saying that he wanted to be the main event. And he said, if I'm not the main event, then pay me more money. You know, that's what he kept saying to this as aura. And it was quite good to see, wasn't it? You know, seeing him having to go at these fucking cons who were like getting paid, you know, on the back of him getting punched in the face. You know, and saying they're trying to fuck him without Vaseline. So it's quite good to see, wasn't it? It's quite good to see, you know, Chisora having to go at fucking Eddie Earn and Adam Smith. You know, and swearing at the coke sniffer, Kelly Sunderland. You know, telling him to fuck off. That was really good to see, wasn't it? You know, like making demands. You know, saying, if I'm not the main event, pay me more money. You know, and then he stormed out of the press conference. And I was like, really proud of him. I was really proud of Cesaro, you know, for doing that. You know, but then he went and posted that photo on his Instagram. For when it feels like they're fucking you without Vaseline, you know, and that kind of ruined it, didn't it? Because that, like, made it seem like the whole thing was an act, you know, and a publicity stunt, you know, when he was kicking off. Swearing at the coke sniffer Kelly Sunderland and having to go at Eddie Earn and fucking Adam Smith. You know that photo there? For when it feels like they're fucking you without Vaseline. You know, it kind of ruined it, didn't it? It made it seem like he was just trying to, like, hype himself up in the press conference. You know, to try and sell pay-per-views and stuff like that. It's, you know, that photo there kind of ruined it, didn't it? So it seems like, you know, Cesaro, does things for publicity. Like, you know, when he did a head-to-head -head with Usyk, you know, he was looking like that, wasn't he? You know, with all that face paint. So he basically copied off that UFC fighter, you know, a few weeks before that. So he's not being original, is he? You know, he's stealing other people's ideas. 
you know, to try and fucking create publicity and try and sell more pay-per-views. He's not being original, is he? Derek Cesaro. You know, and that's a bit like David Hay as well. You know, when he was having a go at Eddie Earn at the press conference. You know, when he was getting ready to fight Bellu. You know, David Hay said that he tried to tune into a Katie Taylor interview. But he couldn't fucking hear what she had to say, you know, because Eddie Earn barged her out the way saying, Yeah, apples and pears. Apples and pears. You know, fucking Eddie Earn, he like barged Katie Taylor out the way, didn't he? Saying, yeah, this is the Eddie Earn show, apples and pears. So David Hay was getting a bit irritated, you know, trying to hear what Katie Taylor had to say. But he couldn't hear what she had to say, you know, because Eddie Earn was like barging her out the way, saying apples and pears. So it really pissed off David Hay, didn't he? So he was having a go at Eddie Earn at the press conference. You know, saying that when your dad was around, you know, he let his fighters like Nassim Hamid, you know, shine through. He didn't try and take the limelight for himself. You know, he let people like Nassim Hamid, you know, show their personality and their character. He didn't try and like barge them out the way saying apples and pears. But you know that photo there, that don't really fucking say that at all, does it? That photo there makes Barry Earn seem like Eddie Earn, you know, like he's trying to get all the limelight for himself. That's what it looks like, don't it? It looks like fucking Barry Earn, Basil, is trying to steal the interview for himself, you know, and trying to get the limelight and trying to get the attention. That's what it looks like there, don't it? So I don't know if David A is fucking right there, you know, when he says that Barry Earn, Basil, you know, let his fighter's personality shine through. Because it doesn't really look like that there, does it? But that's what David Hayes saying anyway. You know, he's having a go at Eddie Earn, isn't he? But then Eddie Earn came back then he and said that David Hayes broke. You know, saying, you're here because you need the dough. That's what he kept saying, didn't he, Eddie Earn? You're here because you need the dough. So they had a little backwards and forwards at the press conference. But then afterwards, you know, David Hay like rang up Eddie Earn saying, that was good, wasn't it? That was quite good, wasn't it? That was quite good to see. That was quite good, yeah. That will increase the pay-per-views, won't it? That was quite good, wasn't it? So he's fucking faking it, David, A. Eh? It was a fucking whole publicity stunt, wasn't it? You know, having a go at Eddie Earn, fucking slagging him off. You know, it was all a publicity stunt, wasn't it? You know, to try and generate more pay-per-view buys. You know, it was fake beef, wasn't it? But David A, he knows how to sell a fight, don't he? You remember when he punched Cesaro and glassed him? That was quite good to see, wasn't it? You know, seeing Adam Booth blooded up, that would have generated more pay-per-view buys as well, wasn't it? You know, Adam Booth getting blooded up like that. You know, Cesaro, he's probably a millionaire, isn't he? You know, he's been on a lot of Skybox office shows, hasn't he? You know, who's he boxed? He boxed Dillian White a couple of times on pay-per-view. He boxed David A. He boxed Tyson Fury. You know, he boxed Klitschko, didn't he? You remember when he spat out Klitschko? So he's been in there with some top names, man. He's got to be a millionaire, hasn't he? Derek. Del Boy. He's got to be a fucking millionaire, hasn't he? Cesaro. And like, you know, Eddie Earn, he said that Derek's fight with Usyk... You know, it generated about 250,000 pay-per-view buys. So 250,000 times 20 pounds, that's 5 million pounds. You know, obviously you don't get all that, does he, Cesaro? You know, it probably gives Eddie Earn a little percentage. And, you know, it gives David Hay a percentage. You know, it's his manager, isn't it? You know, and how much does Usyk get of that? You know, the undercard's got to be paid. I don't know how it works at that top level in boxing. When I boxed, I was boxing at a shit level. A fucking embarrassing level. So I don't know how the figures work, you know, and the percentages, you know, at that top level. But, you know, Cesaro, he's probably a millionaire, isn't he? Has he boxed Joshua? He hasn't boxed Joshua, has he? Those two are little mates. Joshua used to look up to Cesaro, but then Joshua, like, overtook him, didn't he? Do you think there's a bit of resentment there, you know, from Derek? 
Do you think he resents Joshua's success? You know, because like, you know, when Joshua was a little criminal, you know, selling drugs, Derek was the main man in the gym. But you know, Joshua, he like stuck with the boxing, didn't he? He trained hard and then he won a world title. You know, Cesaro, he never got to that world title level, did he? He got to European title level. So do you think there's a bit of resentment there? You know, Cesaro's smiling, but, you know, it could be fake smiles, couldn't it? You know, like pretending to be angry at Coogan. You know, pretending to kick him out of his hotel room. You know, that was fake, wasn't it? So you never know. You know, Cesaro's smiling there with Joshua. You know, it might be fake, man. There might be a bit of resentment there. But he should be grateful, man. He should be happy. You know, like I say, he's probably a multi-millionaire and he's only fucking won a European title. You know, he's lost 10 fights. So he can't really complain too much, can he, Cesaro? You know, he did okay against Usyk as well, didn't he? I don't think Usyk's got it at heavyweight, you know. I don't think he's going to be able to do anything because he was like hitting Cesaro, you know, with punches, you know, with flush punches and they weren't really having an effect, were they? He was just kind of like walking through him. So I don't know. I don't think Usyk's going to be that good at heavyweight. You know, at the top level, you know, Usyk is one of the best pound for pound boxers, isn't he? So, you know, to struggle with Cesaro at heavyweight, you know, I don't think he'll be able to do anything, you know, against Joshua and Fury. You know, those top heavyweights. So yeah, Coogan's fake beef with Derek, you know, it wasn't genuine at all, was it? It was just fake. But yeah, I do like it when the person getting interviewed, as I got the interviewer, you know, really puts it on him. I do like that kind of thing, you know, because that kind of thing's interesting, isn't it? You remember when Mike Tyson was getting interviewed by those journalists? How confident am I going to that you can win this fight. Are you talking out of turn? No, I think we're all talking together. I normally don't do interview with women unless I fornicate with them. So you shouldn't talk anymore. Unless you wanna, you know. You know, and that was really interesting, money. It was really entertaining. You know, I felt a bit sorry for that little journalist woman, you know, cause she's just a little woman, you know, doing her little job. So, you know, Mike Tyson talking to her like that, he was a bit fucked up, wasn't it? But, you know, because Mike Tyson's been falsely accused of rape in the past, you know, he might be a bit weary, you know, about women trying to get close to him. You know, she might have been trying to set him up so she can put in a little rape claim and get him locked up, you know, so she can get a few quid. You know, I don't know if that woman journalist was wearing like a really low cut top, you know, like Michelle Hall Phelps does, you know, to try and get views and subscribers. But yeah, it was good to see Mike Tyson having a go at her. He was a bit fucked up, but it was entertaining, wasn't it? It was good to see. You know, like wrestling. You know, I used to love wrestling when I was a kid, you know, when I was fucking younger, I used to love wrestling. You know, like the little gimmicks, the little twists and turns in the plots and you know the little bits of beef and you know i used to fucking love it man really entertaining wrestling was oh it's fake as fucking it it's not real man khabib you know that's like real wrestling in it grappling ground and pounding that's like the real deal in it khabib who wins that fight in the streets mike tyson and khabib that's a good fight, isn't it? I think Khabib's got the edge, you know. That ground and pounding shit of his is like on another level, isn't it? Yeah, wrestling. Yeah, you remember when Hulk Hogan said that he don't want his daughter being with a nigger? That's what he said, didn't he, Hulk Hogan? He said he don't want his daughter going with a nigger. You know, and then he got kicked out of wrestling, didn't he? And he was getting fucking slandered and... You know, people having a go at him, you know, for being racist. And then fucking Coogan ran up to him for a photo. You know, Coogan, he's got no fucking morals at all, has he, Coogan? He don't give a fuck, does he? He don't give a fuck about the racist comments from Hulk Hogan, does he, Coogan? He don't give a fuck. 
Black lives don't matter to Kugandali. Black lives don't matter. He don't give a fuck, does he, Coogan? As long as he got a nice little fancy photo with Hulk Hogan. You know, for him to show women. You know, to try and impress women so he can fuck them. You know, on the back of having a photo with Hulk Hogan. You know, he don't give a fuck about racism, does he, Coogan? Black lives don't matter. You know, it says it all, don't it, about him. But yeah, Hulk Hogan's daughter's nice, man. I wish I had a daughter like that. She's fucking nice, isn't she? You know, Krugan's trying to get to her, you know, being all pally pally with the dad. He's trying to get to Hulk Hogan's nice daughter, isn't he? Yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing what Krugan's daughter looks like. You know, that's going to give me quite a lot of things to talk about in these videos, isn't it? It's going to give me quite a lot to talk about, you know, over the next few years. It's going to give me a lot of content in it, a lot of material, Coogan's door. So yeah, I look forward to seeing it, you know. I look forward to it. But yeah, that will do, you know, just another little shit video, you know, to talk about fucking Deontay Wilder talking more bullshit, coming up with more excuses about he lost to Tyson Fury. You know, so that will do, you know. Thanks for watching again, yeah. Thanks for that.